Hello and welcome to Everyday Life with Joy, God's Vision Ministries. I am Jocelyn. Um, I just wanted to tell a little bit about this. Um, this actually I just have a Facebook page, Everyday Life with Joy, God's Vision Ministries. And back in 2016, I actually woke up from sleeping and God had given me the name God Vision Ministries. Um, it's one person, me, and I'm not looking to be a church or anything like that. It's just um, what he laid on my heart. At the age of 13, I was actually um, prophesied to that I would be a missionary. And it kind of seems like it's coming to pass. Um, I'm going to be 45 in a few weeks. And I'm kind of walking in my purpose. Um, so I want you to visit my Facebook page. I have <clears throat> more items there. I'm just recently starting this um, YouTube page so I can do live recordings um, and just talk about some things that maybe God is laying on my heart. Um, it's just a page to up uplift. Like it says, everyday life with joy. Unfortunately, there are so many situations that we go through that um, a loss of life, loss of loved one, just job situations, anything can happen. And we lose our joy. We lose our peace. I have been there, so I know what it's like to not have joy, to not have peace, to live every day in turmoil. Um, you just want the situation over with, and it may be a situation you put yourself in, which was my case. And a lot of times I think we pray and we ask God, Lord, I want this, 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 and this. And if he gives it to us, are we ready, number one? But a lot of times we um, put ourselves in situations and we think it's God and it's not. And um, hopefully one day I can speak on some of my issues and situations. But um, I just wanted to give you a little background. And today, today is Sunday, March um, 6th, I believe. March 6th. And today I had the opportunity to um, volunteer with a ministry called um, Under the Bridge Ministries. And I wanted to highlight them today. I'm going to put the link to their Facebook page. Um, and it was Feeding the Homeless downtown. They do it every Sunday. I've been wanting to do it for a while now. I finally had the opportunity. I connected with someone and um, told her I had some food. And she told me other things I could bring. So I did that. And I'll at the end of the video, I'll put a quick video and a couple of pictures. Of course, I didn't take pictures of anyone that we helped um, or anything like that. But I haven't really been into the service aspect of ministry in a while. Before the pandemic, I was working with someone else um, <clears throat> kind of behind the scenes fixing food and we did Thanksgiving and coordinated with her on a lot of things because I can't get out during the day of course because I'm working but um, I want to get more into the service side of things and that's where my heart is so I hope something that I say blesses you resonates with you if there's anything any topic you would like to talk about for me to speak on if you have any prayer requests please send it to everyday life with joy at gmail.com so today when I was volunteering um, downtown it just kind of hit home because there are so many young people that are on the streets um, it's a lot of older people but a lot of young people and I'm just asking myself and asking the Lord why is it that so many of our young people ended up on the street because um, we really have to pray over our youth, over our children. Um, they have so many influences from social media to their peers. And um, the world is getting a hold of them younger and younger. And we're losing them, either through killings, through drugs. I mean, my children have been through some situations that I had never found myself in. Something that I thought I would never deal with. But unfortunately, I have. And a lot of times it's right on, under our nose as parents and we don't even realize what our children are going through until they tell us or say something to us. And it's kind of heartbreaking. I know in my situation, we went through a divorce early and I had planned to put them in family counseling and I did and it's a regret. <clears throat> so now I'm dealing with the after effects of that. And just speaking as a parent, it's not easy. Um, so, Maybe we'll talk about that subject. But today, um, with the volunteering downtown, it made me think of, in the Bible in Matthew, when Jesus speaks of the least of these. And we ask ourselves, who are the least of these? Um, and I 
don't want to preach, don't want to do any of that, but I like to give scripture as a reference point so that you can go back and read it for yourself. I was raised in church and a lot of times we're given scriptures and a word, but it's as that person interpreted, interpreted the scripture or as the Lord gave it to them. So a lot of times what I'm finding as an adult, um, I'm reading it for myself and I'm asking for my own interpretation from the Lord. And so I advise you to do the same thing. If it's something you don't understand, you can get different versions of the Bible, King James. Um, I'm actually doing New American Standard. It's a study Bible. There's um, NIV. There's so many variations that you can understand. I would say King James is the hardest to understand. So you may not want to start with that. But anyway, I wanted to speak of the least of these. In Matthew 25 and verse 35 through 40, I want to read it to you. And it says, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? And when do we see you a stranger and invite you in or naked and clothe you? And when do we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. And um, the least of them could be, it doesn't necessarily refer to a homeless person. It could be someone in your family someone that has suffered a loss um, of employment, a loss of a loved one. Um, it can be your older grandmother who really doesn't have anyone coming and see about them. So um, any place that you have an opportunity to help someone, you could be helping the least of these. A lot of times I know for myself, everything I'll speak on myself and it may resonate with you or not. Um, we ask God, Lord, bless me with this. I want an increase of this. And um, the Lord may send us a test, you know. And a lot of times we think of the least of these as the homeless person we see on the corner. But have you ever gone into like a 7-Eleven and you see the guy outside sitting on the side holding the door or something like that? Um, he could be the least of these. That could be your test. If you go in 7-Eleven, bring out an extra bottle of water, here you go. You know, it, that's all it takes. But, you know, he opens the door for you and you come out and you're doing his no, your nose up at him because you know, maybe he doesn't look like you expect. He's not dressed. He smells. And the Lord is saying, okay, that was the least of these. I sent him as a test because you're asking me for this, but you can even say hello. And the Bible also speaks about there are angels walking among us, angels in disguise. You never know. It says when you will encounter a, an angel, a stranger among us. Um, so it's very important that we treat everyone equally. I know I've in the past, someone has walked up to me and I'm like, uh, no. And I had to ask for forgiveness because that's not the way the Lord would have us to be. So um, I would like for us to think about that as we go through this week. Who are the least of these in your life? Who is someone that you can help? It could be a child at your, um, at the school. You know, your your child may have a friend and say they don't have enough lunch money or they come to school hungry. What does it hurt to send the extra cent? Or you never know what impact that can have. I was recent, recently watching the show, The Talk. I don't know if you know that with Lonnie Love, Adrian, and um, a couple other people. And they had found this friend that Adrian had lost um, like 20 or 30 years ago. And they were asking her why were their friends and the impact that she had. And she, Adrian was saying how her parents had gone through a divorce and this girl lived in a two-story house. And she just had this family unit and Adrian was always welcome and how much that meant to her. She's in her 40s now. And this is when she was in like uh, middle or elementary school, maybe 10, 11. And how much of an impact that had on her as an adult. So you never know the impact you can have on someone's life. We could impact their life negatively or we could impact it positively. It's all in how we choose um, to do it. Okay, so that's, that's all I had today. I don't want to keep you all night. 
um, just a short and sweet message. I'm going to try to get on here every morning and do just like a something inspirational. If it's just a prayer um, before I get my day started, that may help you. Like I said, I would love to hear from you if you um, have any comments, you have any prayer requests, whatever it may be. And I'm always going to um, end this with the prayer. So, Father God, we thank you for allowing us to see this day that was truly not promised to us, Lord. As we go through our week, I ask you just to show us opportunities where we can help someone, those that you refer to as the least of these, those that we may not even pay attention to, Lord, that may just be walking around us who feel like they're in invisible, Lord, but show them to us, Lord. Help us to come into counter with someone that we can help on this week, Lord. Someone did wake up today, Father God. We ask you just to bless that family. Touch them right now, Lord. Anyone who's listening, Lord, I ask you if they're going through any sickness, any pain, any disease, um, a divorce, a loss of a child, Lord, whatever it may be. Lord, I ask you just to touch them right now. Give them the peace that only you can give them, Lord. We ask you just to cover them, Lord, as we end this day and we lay down. Give us peace. Give us sweet rest, Father God. Let us just lay down and know that there's nothing that you can't handle, that we do not have to stay up all night worrying about whatever it may be, that you give us perfect peace. And the song says, joy will come in the morning, Father God. The sun will rise tomorrow and it will all be better. Lord, we ask you just to bless those who are thinking about committing suicide, Lord, that are thinking about ending their lives. Just give them a glimmer of hope, someone to reach out to them, Lord, someone to say a kind word, someone just to smile at them, Father God, to let them know that there is joy in the world, that you exist, Lord, that there is a brighter day. I ask you just to touch those children, Lord, as they go to school tomorrow. We ask you to cover them, Lord, keep them safe from any hurt, harm, or danger. The enemy is after our children. We ask you just to protect them, Father God. Don't let them give into the temptations of this world, Lord. We ask this all in your name, we pray. Amen. Oh, I have my rice here. And I'm gonna, and I have my um, meat here and my beans. I'm about to tape these down so I can transport it. I'm running a little bit behind, but it's 3.37. So I'll see you guys later.